unto us through your name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not, but rejoice that your name is written in the book of life. Why is that so important? Because when you receive Jesus as your personal Savior, and when you receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit, God begins to lighten your candle. He begins to give you understanding of spiritual things. And the weapons of our warfare, because we have an enemy out there. There are different realms of satanic power. And, and so the Word of God can bring down those strongholds over principalities. As Ephesians 6 tells us, over principalities, darkness, ruling spirits that rule over nations to cause violence, to cause terrible, terrible things to happen, to cause the destruction of mankind. You see, our God is a God of peace. And he said, my peace I leave you, not as the world gives it. Let not your heart be troubled or be afraid. Because you see, when Jesus Christ went to the cross, indeed, he nailed, right when he was nailed to the cross, all the powers of darkness. Had Satan known, he would have never crucified the Lord of glory. But that was God's plan. The innocent Lamb of God, God came from his glory, robed in human flesh. His name was Jesus. In all points he was tempted like we are, and yet without sin. And when the Lord said, I saw Satan falling, he was looking to the not just the cross, but to the glory of the cross, the resurrection. And in that resurrection power, he delivered us from indeed the, the last enemy to be put down is death. And so I want you to know that we have passed from death unto life because, because of what he's done on the cross. Think about that. So actually, the Christian... When he dies, well, when he dies, that's only the physical body. The real him, the inner person, goes from to be absent in the body, is to be present with the Lord, and is right, goes right on into paradise. And so, so he really doesn't know death. He knows a, the Christian knows a passing on into eternity. Now, actually, the person that has rejected Christ also lives lives forever but in darkness and without Christ where there's no life, where there's no hope. And so God has made a way for every single man. This is not his will. He is not willing that any should perish, and, but that all should receive eternal life, the eternal life of peace and joy and purpose. And so as he is, so shall we be. And so when the Lord Jesus, by the power of the Spirit, put, actually they were going to cast him head down over a cliff, and they were going to do terrible things, try to cut his life short. But he knew the resistance by the power of the Spirit to Satan, and that the Word of God, even when he was tried by the enemy, the Word of God that was in his mouth put Satan down. He said, get thee behind me, Satan that he would worship God and him only would, would he serve. And the, the word of the Lord says, man shall not, that you and I, shall not live by bread alone. The bread, or shall we say natural foods, feeds the natural man. But by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Isn't that a wonderful thing? So when Jesus, the living word, comes inside of us, then he begins to manifest that word, that word of life through us, that we can have power over the enemy. That is why he said, I see Satan falling. And he says, I give you power. And that was prophetic. That was prophetic. For the day that Jesus rose from the, from the grave and that he spent 40 days on the earth, the resurrected Christ, and then he ascended. 
He said, it's so needful so that I can send the deutimous power of the Holy Spirit. And by the power of the Spirit, we can put down the enemy. We can put down strongholds. Isn't that a wonderful, wonderful thing? And you may have a spirit tormenting you today. Maybe you're afraid of death. Maybe you're afraid that there's not going to be enough supply. Maybe you live in a war-torn country. Whatever that is happening. Or you're afraid that your son or your daughter is going to go astray upon drugs. You're afraid that a disease is going to come and overtake you. The Lord said, after that the Holy Spirit has come, I give you power. And so the first step is receiving the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal friend and Savior. So let's just take the first step. Let's just begin to just get our toes in the cool, living waters of the Lord. I want you to reach your hand out wherever you're at. I want you to pray this prayer with all of your heart because it's only Jesus that can save. It's only Jesus that can heal. It's only Jesus that can save us from sin. In fact, his name shall be called Jesus, and he shall save his people from their sins. So let's pray this prayer right now. Let's just say, Dear Jesus, come into my heart. Lord, forgive me of every sin, everything I've done wrong. I turn to you with all my heart. Write my name in the book of life. Baptize me with your Holy Spirit of love. Lord, I thank you that you received me just as I am and that you've forgiven, you went to the cross that all my sins would be nailed there and I can walk away free and I can have entrance to the Father through the name of Jesus, amen. And if you pray that prayer, that's the beginning step. You've invited Jesus in. You invited the Holy Spirit in. And now you'll want to understand, and the Word of God tells us there are many, many ways of tearing down the stronghold of the enemy. Number one is worship. That's inviting the presence of God. Lord, I will worship you. And you begin to sing worship songs such as hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And he releases his precious Holy Spirit, his very, very presence. And so the first thing we need is the, the presence of the Lord and a thankful heart. The Word of God says, give thanks unto the Lord for all things, even the bad things that happen. We had a bad thing that happened to us this week. My husband and I, we had a, a motor home that we had insurance covering the fact that if we had gotten into an accident or if something happened, we could, they would provide a tow truck. Well, they didn't, and an injustice was done to us. But we kept believing that God was going to work this thing out for good. And the Word of God says that all things work together for good. To them that love God and are called according to his purpose. Well, naturally the enemy began to say, you can't afford this. What are you going to do? And we were so overwhelmed because the meal was close to $1,000. Well, we kept praying and God began to work on circumstances to, because our, our motor home was impounded. And every day that it stayed in that yard, the finances would pile up more and more and more. So a dear little friend of a friend, God touched her heart and said, I will release the money. And so we, that indeed worked out well, but then there were other hurdles because we felt this dear little girl certainly needed to be paid back. And so we went, of course, into the AAA, and uh, they were very kind and very open. Now we know it's all going to work out for good. We were, are able to witness of his love and of his goodness and of his mercy. I even had the, 
the opportunity to pray with the man that towed our truck, and he was kind of a very impatient young man, but he calmed down. And so the love of Jesus can be shown, and that's only by the, his grace, by the power of the Holy Spirit, in the most difficult circumstances. We don't need to be worried, because what did the enemy of our soul want? He wanted a stronghold of worry. He wanted a stronghold of doubt. He, he, and so the, the doubt would be, well, where's God in all of this? But the wonderful thing is, God is our provider, Jehovah Jireh. And the God of peace certainly can rule and reign in the midst of this. So it's finding his purpose in the midst of the trial that we can grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the enemy cannot get a stronghold. So we begin to hold forth the shield of faith to quench all the fiery darks of the wicked one. And we remind the enemy that Jesus paid for it on the cross by his own blood. And oh, that sends any demonic force screaming away. So it's through worship and through, through faith and it's through the blood of Jesus. And then leaning on the promises of God because God has a promise to take care of us. And so even as the scripture that I read, that indeed Jesus saw Satan falling. And Paul says I, that we would see Satan under, we would see him bruised under our feet shortly. Well, in that shortly, we're learning to take the authority that's given to us. For we have authority over the enemy. He do, we don't have to let him rule us, rule our mind, rule our emotions. We can have our mind renewed by the wonderful word of God. And so there, as we can have so many exceedingly great and precious promises. And then another thing that we can lean on Jesus and know that he understands, because certainly he had his temptations to knowing as a man facing the death of the cross and laying his right to be God down, only picking that up when he heard the Father say, manifest my love and my glory, such as the feeding of the 5,000s, the compassion, and as such as the healing of the sick, casting out of devils. And then we remember that that also, through obedience, through obedience, our precious Lord and Savior, through obedience, and as we are obedient, and as we stand upon the word of God, we see the power of God manifested in miracles, in absolute miracles. And so I'd like to even read a portion of scripture in Hebrews as we began to look at our one and learn more about him. So the first thing, and we were taught by Pastor Benny, Benny Hinn just a few days ago, that the first thing is the presence of God. It was the presence of God, even before the power of God, the presence of God gave those wonderful, wonderful martyrs the power to indeed go through tremendous trials, to be torn up by lions, and uh, to manifest such a witness of Jesus Christ. And it's also that same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead, the, the relationship he had with the Father gave him the power through the Holy Spirit to offer up his life through the eternal spirit, the word of God says. So anything facing you, first of all, know God's character. Know that he is a God. God is not a God that should lie. Men lie to us, but God never lies. He always keeps his promises. This word is the eternal word of God. And so we want to know uh, surely the, his word. And so that's another thing. Learn the word of God. Come to him by prayer. And my husband was sharing with me today about a missionary who was on a journey. And there, were, there was indeed a band of wicked robbers that knew that he had money to buy supplies. And so what happened back in, in the States where he came from his home church, there was a man that interceded for him. And God woke him up at night and said, 
call for a prayer meeting. This missionary's life is in danger. And so he did. And, and so besides himself, 16 other brothers that love God, there's uh, indeed their love for the Lord and to pray for a desperate need was more important in their sleep. And so they rallied around, they began to intercede and take authority over the stronghold of violence that was about ready to, to crash in on this poor missionary, perhaps even take his life. And so as the band of robbers came, all of a sudden they started to flee. And it was like they saw something. And, they, and so the missionary was able to get to a station, buy supplies for his little precious missionary compound to help the people that he served. Well, he was home on furlough. And, and he went to a meeting. And of course, those 17 brothers were there. And he shared this experience. And so, and also, but before that, there was one of the actual robbers that, that said, well, this was something. How did you have 17 warriors dressed up to scare us off. Anyway, he found out that, that uh, knowledge. I don't know whether it was through interpretation of language, but he found that out. So what do you think happened? There were 17 brothers that prayed. And so obviously, 17 warrior angels, even supposedly with with guns or whatever, spiritually speaking. But what those robbers saw was they didn't have a chance. And so the enemy doesn't have a chance. He can roar as a lion, but he's a gunless lion because Jesus is the true king of kings and the lion of the tribe of Judah. And by the way, Judah means praise. So out of praise and worship comes that manifested authority of the power of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that a wonderful, wonderful story? And, and my husband was telling me of another story, and I wished he was here to say it because he has a very special way of saying it. He knew this brother in Oregon and who had a job, and, all, and a job was a logger. And so all these logs started rushing down the river, and as he was coming to the station, somehow this log had hit him, and he went immediately down in the waters. Well, there was a little Christian lady there praying, and there immediately all these teams went forth to try to find this poor logger that was hit, and it looked like perhaps he, would, he had died. Well, this woman kept praying, and she kept saying, in the name of Jesus, I bind you, you foul spirit of death. And just as they were about ready to give up, well, one of the loggers was able to hook up his britches, and up he came. He looked like he was dead. At, but all of a sudden, because this woman kept praying, rebuking the spirit of death, there was a flicker of life after 45 minutes. You know that was a miracle. They rushed him to the hospital. Well, during his time, he had seen hell, all the flames of hell. But he said, Jesus, if Jesus, and he saw Jesus in the distance, and he said in his mind, if Jesus would just look at me, I know everything would be all right. Jesus had passed him, but he turned around, just like the woman in the Bible that said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment. And immediately, his brain and everything was put together. And because of that, he began to share with all of his logger friends who were so amazed he was called into the ministry. You see, we do have authority over the enemy. For this purpose, Jesus was born to deliver us out of the hand of Satan into the hand of our wonderful Lord. So I'm going to call right now, you foul spirit of disease and infirmity, cancer, I take authority over you in the mighty name of Jesus. I take authority over you. You have to go. And that person that is suffering from colon cancer, you are free right now in Jesus' name. You who have been struggling and battling with medical drugs, 
I take authority over the spirit of pharmakia and witchcraft and command you to go in the name of Jesus. Be filled with the Holy Spirit right now. Receive the, the Holy Ghost in Jesus' wonderful name. And the word of his kingdom, God sent forth his disciples to preach the gospel of the kingdom, which is deliverance for body and soul and spirit. God wants to raise you up, my friend. The word of his kingdom is to raise you up that you might know righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Spirit. I also want to t uh, tell you about our wonderful End Time Ministries Bible University. And so uh, this university, if you will, call 562-219-1394. You will learn more about the Word of God. If there's something we can do for you, please call in to the Cross Television Station and be sure and write a check unto them, this wonderful station, Reaching Multitudes. God loves you and I love you. That's the way it's going to be. God loves you and I love you. And that's for the world to see. Until next time, God bless you, keep you, make his face to shine upon you and to give you his everlasting peace. God bless you. Amen.